Hello and welcome to Learning Fun Zones podcast. I am your host Harshida Sagri, the founder of Learning Fun Zone. Today, we are incredibly fortunate to have with us a true expert in the field of artificial intelligence and education, Dr. Siddharth Ghosh. Welcome to the podcast, sir. Uh, thank you. Very good morning, Harshida. I am really uh, delighted and also thank you for inviting me for this talk. Let's go ahead. Welcome to the podcast, sir. Let me introduce Dr. Siddharth Ghosh to audience. Dr. Ghosh is currently the head of training and placement at Anurag University and a professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. With over 23 years of experience in teaching, research and industry collaboration, he is at the forefront of AI education. Dr. Ghosh's academic journey is truly impressive. He completed his BE from NIT Agartala followed by an M.Tech in Computer Science from Hyderabad Central University. He then earned his PhD in Artificial Intelligence from Osmania University, Hyderabad. In recognition of his outstanding work, Dr. Ghosh has received several prestigious awards. He was named a Click Luminary in 2018 for his contributions to data analytics and in 2010, IBM USA honored him with the Best Innovative Faculty Award for Smart Cities, which came with a $10,000 cash prize. Dr. Ghosh's expertise extends beyond academics. He successfully mentored and placed nearly 6,000 students in various engineering and MBA colleges throughout his career. In 2019, he designed and launched a BTEC Artificial Intelligence program under JNTU Hyderabad. On a personal note, I am thrilled to share that Dr. Ghosh has been a mentor to me in my journey with Learning Fun Zone. His expertise and guidance have been invaluable in helping us design our AI courses for children. Dr. Ghosh's insights have played a critical role in shaping our curriculum and approach to teaching AI concepts to young learners. Today, we are exploring the exciting world of AI and its impact on education, especially for our children. With his vast experience, deep insights, and direct involvement in shaping AI education for kids, Dr. Ghosh is the perfect guide to help us understand this complex topic and fascinating. Dr. Ghosh, thank you so much for joining us and for your continued support for Learning Fun Zone. We are truly honored to have you here. So, let's dive right in. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, let's move ahead. So, Dr. Ghosh, for our listeners who might be new to this topic, could you give us a quick overview of what is AI and why it is becoming so important in our daily lives? Uh, a very good and valid question because as long as we are not clear about the objective of AI and what is AI, the learning may not be that fruitful. It may be at any age because we have adult learners who are just uh, picking up AI learning uh, these days. We have the new learners, uh, the toddlers uh, these days discussing about AI, uh, generative AI. They are discussing about augmented reality, virtual reality. It's basically happening uh, surrounding us. So uh, how it goes, I like to make it as easy as possible, as simple as possible so that you know, everyone can take it. So basically, uh, let us start with the intelligence part. Like uh, in a class, uh, that is the best example in a meeting we can give that in a class we normally define this student is very intelligent, uh, he is mediocre and uh, these two students are not at all intelligent, they don't pick up the things fast. Now, in what basis we basically identify human being as intelligent person or not intelligent person or the intelligent quotient is little less. Uh, basically, if you see when we interact with people, maybe uh, the way uh, they are giving few answers uh, that shows that they have in-depth knowledge uh, of the topic. They have done some work and mainly we feel that intelligent quotient when we go with a problematic question to them or in a class we give a maths where you have little bit twisted the math it's not a basic it's an addition but a twisted one and then uh, you see who can solve it first and we feel the intelligent people normally solve it first because they think beyond uh, the regular learners and the problem solvers so maths is an area you can recognize giving a problem to the people the intelligent quotient mainly the fast solving the way of solving so these two we can take the way people solve a problem and uh, the time they take is some of the basic intelligent quotient we use in regular life right so uh, taking this one forward we feel uh, uh, a human being when a problem has been given uh, an intelligent person the way he or she is solving the problem is 
a little bit or way ahead different from the others. Others are also solving the problem, but the way intelligent people will solve it is a little bit different. We take this basic concept into now software. If you see the history of software, it's long. I will, uh, before going into the AI, I like to make it very clear. The personal computing came into the picture in 1995 for the mass because that's the starting of Windows 95. It's the most popular operating system as a desktop application. And so 1995 is very important from computing point of view. And from there, uh, basically for desktop, we started applications. We call them as a desktop application. They are software, desktop application, later stage, uh, around 99-2000, Java came into the program to give a support because the desktop computer started connecting to the internet. So Java came into the picture and latest, it took much time. Uh, 2001-2, we got uh, normal mobile phones, not the smartphones, 2000-2001. And the smartphone became a reality actually in 2010. So 95, 2000, 2010 are very important. Now, why I'm saying and what is the relation with AI of this part? When you started using desktop computer, computer 1995 and later, and the applications which were uh, developed, we call basic software or desktop application or web-based application. Now, this software can solve some problems. So let us see what the problem the software can solve. You can have as simple as a browser is an application which connects you to internet. Uh, you have a desktop application like VLC Media Player which helps you to listen music or run a video uh, like that. Even if you remember, we have the Yahoo chat on the desktop machine and such apps were there. Uh, software developed during this time up to better to tell 2000 and uh, 2010, I will say, though it's not a basic history that I will come with a proof. But if you see 95 to 2010, as smartphone was not there across, we were able to solve the problems using basic software. We are not thinking about the intelligent portion that the problem should be solved in a different way also. And hence, AI came into existence basically uh, from software point of view into our life along with the smartphone. And automatically we st started using desktop application and giving AI based solutions. But it came to our life around 2010 onwards when Musk started uh, using mobile phones or smartphones and the name is a smart so the basic phone were not enough on this context let me now define ai uh, ai started in 1960s where uh, and ai is divided basically in two parts for many people they feel ai machine learning is python we forget that python is just a vehicle even we can write ai machine learning programs using java and c also many people don't know i'll come to later so ai are of two types one is the basic ai or i will call it as a logic based ai very important for us because data driven ai came into existence basically after 2010 and that's why i told the history first when the data were generated like anything from the smartphones and more from laptops and other handheld devices everywhere data got generated we started getting solutions which are data driven and we call today in the field of ai machine learning deep learning data science in the total field in the later stage i will also clarify these things we tell that data is the fuel but it was not the case in 2060 and that's why i told 1995 desktop computer came that means 1960 to 1985 then how the journey of ai happened it's basically logic based so AI are of two types. Data-driven AI, which you are seeing today, comes in the form of machine learning, deep learning, and data science. The logical AI, which comes in the form of logic. Now let me define what is AI. AI is that field of computer science, or better to tell artificial intelligence, is that field of computer science. When a problem you are solving with uh, some software, that means you are writing a code, or writing a program to solve a problem. Uh, the basic way of solving the problem, if it is given to a human being, the same problem solved by human being, if doesn't require any intelligence, but the same problem given to a human being, it requires intelligence. The computer science, the field of computer science, which deals with that kind of, what you can call problems, where intelligent question need to be added in the form of coding. We call that kind of software or that specific coding environment driven by artificial intelligence that means there is a real difference between the normal software versus a artificial intelligence 
drive in soft we'll give you a simple example and i stop intentionally took more time because just a bookish definition will not work every one of us use a uh, a uh, compiler to run code and that is the first thing you give it to the even kids or the new learners adult learners who go for coding let it be c c plus plus java jdk uh, python uh, anything there is a compiler now question is that uh, what is a compiler a compiler is a software which helps me to compile the programs agree 100 percent is it is the normal compilers can i call it is a artificially intelligence driven compiler or can i call it say AI software? Answer is no. Why? Okay. As a kid or adult learner, I do coding every day one hour. And whenever I write code, it shows me some error, either syntactical or semantic. It shows me error. Uh, syntax normally, logic normally doesn't show. Already you are seeing logic, it doesn't show. And that is one of the negative uh, feedback for any of the compiler. Come to the syntax also as simple. If there is a syntax error, the semicolon need to be given. It's not given. Printf need to be written. P as a small example I'm giving. And you are not writing. And this mistake as a, what you can call sometimes not a sincere learner or serious learner, I do it every day. Same problem. I come and print it. I choose the basic corrections are given by compiler and move ahead. But how it will be on the third day compiler says there are three errors which I have corrected 12 times for you last three days. I'm not going to correct it. So please go back to the roots and hints are this. So your compiler starts interacting with you, mentoring you, put a resistance for you. And if you see that is what basically uh, our mentors, our guides, they do. So a compiler can be converted, uh, converted into an AI driven compiler when it apply logics works on small data that you are doing 12 mistake is not a, a gigabytes or petabytes of data it's just a simple around 20 30 situations the compiler has recognized save the kind of problems uh, kind of mistakes you are doing and then categorize it and next day when you are doing the same mistake it stops you in doing it so the learner learns very fast and that is the difference between a basic software versus ai software you put intelligent quotient in the form of coding either in the form of logic the first example i give very less data or in the form of data very huge amount of data and something like you tell uh, nlp that yeah there is a mistake in your text because there is a huge amount of data so that is the closer line from me artificial intelligence is that area of computer science where we embed intelligence quotient into the basics of to solve real life problems thank you dr ghosh for all the introduction and history of computers and ai and we could understand now ai with lots of examples now dr ghosh there is one more question like with your extensive experience in ai how would you see the role of ai in a common person's life evolving in the coming year it is already there. The, the day you started using your smartphone, uh, you are directly connected to the AI world. We call uh, the mobile phone as the machine learning device. The machine learns from data and that means it's the advanced AI is machine learning. A machine learns from data. What it is learning, if you see just now, if you open your mobile phone, it show, shows you uh, the, that means there is a priority queue whom you have called maximum number of time. It's called your priority. Uh, it helps you to identify your voice. So voice recognition already is there and you start actually today's new phones uh, with uh, voice recognition hey google hi google you need to save it so it uh, saves your voice and next time when you give command it recognizes your voice so ai is already touched our life most of the people use smartphone in the other places whenever uh, we are going into today uh, airport we have dg yatra so there's very much your face recognition is there earlier we used to think when i started ai journey is 2004 so 20 years used to have in book you think it it is there so uh, ai is AI has touched our life. Uh, there are people who today going to the market or online purchasing TV, which is AI driven, AI enabled uh, TV, AI enabled AC are just uh, in many home and Alexa. So you are giving order. Sometimes no, it takes much input for you. Uh, smart home, you are making smart uh, home automation, which it helps you uh, to having an entry at home or identifying the you know, unknown people stops the door for them. It's, it's happening. There is nothing like that. AI is not there in our life. Uh, you are uh, uh, opening your uh, what you can call uh, the all online tests many online tests are proctored today getting into a GE or any kind of competitive exam are proctored uh, you cannot move left or right it recognizes your motion uh, it recognizes your eye contact you cannot do like this taking a tcs online test it stops you if you do it more than three times automatically shut down the thing so it's not on huge data actually yes the machine is trained but when it is recognition it's not uh, that uh, what you can call uh, complex today so ai is there it will be much there 
there in our life and uh, it's like computer if someone tells a uh, computer is there in your life he or she may be coming from english geography or uh, become background may not be extreme user of laptop or desktop on a daily basis but he or she is going to bank taking uh, help uh, from the bank people where computer is used you go to railway line uh, to book your tickets computer is used so the way computer is has tasked our life whether you own a device or not own a device same way you may not own ai or some ai device at home but it has tasked our life in every aspect in different forms in different sectors it will be there and it makes our life easier basically talking about ai in daily lives i can remember like uh, there were traffic police in all the signals right so in maharashtra there is one ai uh, traffic uh, like ai system which will collect a bit the speed of the vehicle the numbers of the vehicle and whoever has who is driving very fast they'll be sending the chalan uh, each chalan to their uh, whatsapp number and they'll be deducting money from that from the fast track so fast track so now here we can see like the role of the traffic police has been completely replaced by ai now this is an example where ai is coming into our daily lives i would say now dr ghosh coming to the next question there is an ongoing debate about ai and employment employment right so in your opinion will ai primarily create jobs or will it replace the job so what is your take on that there is no basically replacement the term is really wrong it's an advancement it's an advancement so uh, the day we started accepting new technologies science evolved technology evolved engineering evolved we are moving towards advancement and it is a constant advancement is a constant approach and new things will be keep on coming the way a uh, computer came into the banking sector if you remember there is a lot of hue and cry that people will be losing job because computers will be replacing later stage uh, the people who are trained on computers the banking people some people are 50 55 years i know i had uncle he was so excited he was is telling i need to write the registers every day uh, registers are tiered of there is situation uh, some godala happen in that bank and the register papers were tiered of so there is no evidence where the money gone he told at the age of 55 years i am now happy that my data is secured my register is secured inside the computer that was his stuff my register is secured inside that so a banking employee he was one of the pioneer at that time i remember he used to go and put down we don't need computer in banking we don't need computer because that will reduce people but later uh, we realized how it is we protested even if you see atm and other micro payments people protested uh, i don't want to name any person here people even protested against government or head of the country they protested but in corona paytm is something we realized touchless payments are how important because fear of life you don't need to touch cash just scan and start giving so corona is the time actually a uh, touchless payment taken everywhere. today how many people use cash i tried actually i i am a person coming from both the side i always carry some cash thinking that cab driver may refuse me the shopkeeper may refuse me but the refuser is very less cab there is some history but even the shop he says uh, if it is 98 rupees he says i don't have 2 rupees either you give me 100 or pay me 98 over uh, scan so that's how it is upi has changed the world so should we accept or not ai is the same way uh, it is a blessings basically uh, to move ahead yes there will be few basic jobs always will be removed and there are many things which are removed from life you just think of how many people today purchase a big camera or digital camera people purchase a better mobile phone so it has is the cameras basically people say from digital cameras my iphone is better and i can do any kind of editing a camera is some like 2 2.5 3 lakhs a digital camera today 40000 phone help you helps you to really capture nice pictures of life and videos equally and processing inside it is so powerful uh, it's happening because of technological advancement ai is a technological advancement it's nothing different from the other technological advance so uh, the basic things will be always eliminated and new things will be added and that's the reason government is very serious people like harshada is very serious and they are taking initiative to teach ai uh, to the kids or toddlers on the new learners because they realize this is the new uh, way of living life so i i i had a training and placement and uh, discuss uh, with the recruiters that uh, what kind of knowledge you require even from the btech ai people btech computer science people they told the same thing what we are doing for last 10 years we want them to solve problem 
problems and that is the basic thing that a person should do and regarding ai it is something like adding new techniques that's it we'll be adding new techniques with new algorithm there are few other algorithms which are not non-ai algorithms there are algorithms which are ai driven algorithms and the, again coming back to the example of a compiler is a non-ai driven compiler versus a ai driven compiler even think of a programming we'll go a little bit later if uh, the simple program or algorithm we tell adding two numbers so it is something like algebra right integer a integer b so something like in math let us initialize two variables a comma b we write in exam so a is equal to 10 b is equal to 10 they are also we write a is equal to in programming integer c c is a new, new variable so in pro, in math we write let us take another variable c c is equal to a plus b then what is the value of b c is equal to if a is 10 b is 10 c is equal to 20 if this is the case uh, and in the next level when you write the same software or a program enter the value of a enter the value of b we take the value from keyboard and give c is equal to what are the a value and b value is given the basic programs written in any programming language on day one is like question is there how to put some ai concept into that so that a new today's programmer will understand idea is that if you give three times a is 10 and b is 10 the fourth time it should the program should tell you cannot enter these three values and because you have already entered and that's is happening in real life if you want to change your password in google it says you this is the password you have used last three times so last three times used but cannot be given now it's happening with everyone but we are not capturing it or discussing it so ai is there AI will not replace any job AI will make advancement of the things our education uh, policy should be evolved our learning should be enhanced uh, we should look at to the problem more seriously uh, students we are creating for years as uh, to mug up and write exams should be converted into a problem oriented uh, problem how to solve a problem that should be the orientation history should be taught in a different way geography should be taught in a different way in a geography class in the geography book anywhere Ashada, you have seen to teach about google map this is the subject it should be taught i personally feel like uh, after going through all this uh, education system and then working in IT and then coming back I always feel like why did we learn some topics that time like what is the use of these things that we learned so we could have learned something more practical that time that would have helped me now in my work or that would have helped me now understand something more better so yeah I feel that like some topics have to be more relevant to the current times in our education system Google map is should be a must in geography how to use it best there should be a lab in geography on google map because it's life-saving actually there are even reminders google calendars we, we, the timetable should be released on google uh, time, uh, google uh, calendar for the kids we give in printouts thousands of printouts right and then no and then drop it and then you tell pollution so everywhere they're connected so if ai is really used there will be so much advancement today as simple as uh, think about the fish bots which is uh, fish bots you just drop them in a um, what you can call drink uh, and a drainage system or anywhere where the pits are there sewerage system where earlier people used to get down and clean and re repair the pipes uh, and many people die due to cleaning of those pipes uh, or drainage system today a fish bought in a pond uh, which is already like uh, polluted a lake in order to send those swimmers or the normal human being the fish bot goes inside and gives you analysis of oxygen level uh, other uh, what you can call pollu uh, polluted uh, what you can call particles which may harm our skin and all so basic information is gathered and then you can make a better plan of how to clean this old pond or how to clean the sewerage system is the best example where it is not replacing those people it's the saving those people where they are actually not using ai but using ai we can save those lives think about the robotic system where really we should today create to uh, what you can call uh, save our borders the robot should be used there why because the first bullet should come to robot not to our soldiers what is replacement of soldiers people will think oh, soldiers will get job why soldiers should be there today when robots are there create such system at least one lakh of rope can save our no border and our mothers who are no losing their son at border they should come back should come back and uh, that's that's very heartbreaking that our soldiers are losing life for not much reason so that's where i think ai will not replace anyone using it properly will be saving so many lives in the coming days but yes to work in those fields our way of learning solving the problem 
outcomes should be different. So, Dr. Siddharth, as someone who has designed AI curriculum for university, at what age do you think it is appropriate to start introducing these AI concepts to children? And how should the approach differ for these younger children or younger learners? Very interesting question. And uh, I, I have found a nice answer for this through my experience of 20 years spending. The day you start teaching them English grammar or language grammar, that day you can start teaching AI. Because the basic AI are logic driven. When you are telling grammar, basically you are teaching them rules. Grammar is rules. Basic AI are depends on rules. So if they understand grammatical part, they can understand AI part up to next 3-4 years. That means you are starting grammar normally in class 3 I think or 4. It's the best age to start with AI and tell them to make rules and observe the real life things and how to create rules. That's the important thing. As long as you don't define rule, the rule is not going to help you. Giving you one more simple example. So basically you want your essay should be AI driven and it should understand like whether as simple as if someone is there at home uh, then it's on fine but you have gone out without making it off yeah one thing is that you can do it iot connection as you know today in mobile phone you have the app app is connected to internet and through internet you can control ac right that solution is not an ai solution first you need to understand this is a iot internet of things a solution uh through mobile controlling an ac but when you go out and you are driving for a one hour of time and you could not do it pressing the mobile even though you have internet you have a mobile you have iot but you are not able to do it here comes the access. smart sensor sensor recognize there is no one in the home for last 10 minutes and it automatically switch off the ac this is ai so use of first one is not ai mobile iot internet control ac is not ai a sensor identifying there is no human movement and then closing an AI, uh, ac that is something now what it is that uh, the, the relation between this concept and the kids learning ai the kids learning ai we need to make them really understand that what is grammar actually in most of the schools we teach grammar as a subject not as a guideline you are teaching them rule across when you ask someone uh, something like he go to market is wrong it should be he goes to market ask why many people will not be able to explain the reason uh, singular plural verb but present past participle all these things come into the picture from where it is coming is come from english grammatical rule and that is syntax these are the syntax the same as when in ai we want to be logical ai and try to solve some real life problems we can help the kids to make them understand that uh, how uh, they can write better concept uh, for solving problems including mathematics so more use of brain more use of life skills looking at the problem uh, from different perspective and uh, making them to think on the existing solutions how to come with a better how to come with a better solution can helping the kids to open up their mind and that will lead to a better ai learner same as he is learning grammar maths ai is just a new entity so if you don't actually properly teach take out the ai also if the way of teaching and problem solving is not proper in case of grammar and maths that person will not be much successful in problem solving domain he may be very good in other things but the problem solving domain will not be good we need to understand Understand. When you are discussing about AI and teaching kids, we are not teaching not teaching history, geography, or literature. We are teaching a tool to solve real life problems. The way maths is being taught. So this way of learning or way of teaching is correct. AI is going to be not a big deal from third or fourth standard again. Start teaching. So the gram grammar example that you gave is really uh, nice. Like my own daughter, she is now five years old in the first standard. My, now she is learning computers in the first standard yeah, as per the state government and SSC board and she has computer science as a topic and even AI is one chapter of it so I was also amazed like yeah the curriculum is really adapting to this new requirement uh, when you Ashada gave her uh, the mobile phone to see something or make her busy while you are offering her food what might be the age you give her mobile phone Mm -hmm. I would say at one and a half year maybe because even if we try to keep them away from these digital devices it's not possible because we live in nuclear families and it's uh, very difficult like we have to give them these kind of devices for some time at least till we complete some work. No that's not the issue. My point is that so the device AI device is given at one and a half year so at if she is in class one she's six years in class one so after four and a half year she has the right to understand some of the things. A gaming uh, game based 
based learning are interesting way to teach AI also gamification. If you do gamification, many other things will be easier to teach subjects like AI and even maths. Okay, at Learning Fun Zone, we also focus on making game based learning and which will be fun for kids and they will be learning while having this kind of game activities and fun. Okay, and next question I would ask is like, uh, how can parents introduce AI to their children in a fun and engaging way, even if they're not themselves tech experts? Uh, and this is always good uh, to uh, at least help them uh, ask if they're in school as a teacher at least what are the good websites uh, or YouTube uh, videos or uh, some small course uh, they can join and help them that is find a mentor either on or offline find a mentor who can teach uh, AI to them if uh, uh, maths can be taught uh, even though some of the families as we see their parents are not that highly qualified even they're very rich they can even give laptop to the kid they are very serious on uh, uh, learning process or education because they missed it in their childhood most of the parents even though they are not highly educated they want their kids should be educated they want them to send to english medium school and all so a good school actually is always required the school and uh, the learning mentors like you are uh, the new uh, what you can call hope in the society that uh, they will be helping the kids to learn faster so find a mentor in the form of a teacher in school uh, an online learner like uh, Ashada will help them to learn the things faster the way you are looking for a maths teacher look for a ai man thank you so much sir for recommending us so also one more thing like you have been recognized for your work in data analytics and smart cities project right so how can we inspire children to think about real world ai applications like this can you tell me about how to teach a real world ai application the basic education system is very strong in india first we need to accept it no comments because that has given us uh, honorable honorable apj abdul kalam it has given us satya nadella it has given us uh, sundar pichai ji so who are ruling the world that means our education system and the basic education they also come from indian schooling indian colleges so basic education system is very wrong uh, strong and uh, we need to have a wrong concept at all that we are going into something foreign countries if something big is happening nothing happening in india uh, we are also uh, being at this level outcome of the basic education system i have been taught in uh, bengali from class 1 to 12 class 1 to 12 english was just a subject for us so when we entered engineering not able to speak properly in english but foundation was very strong for us so no we went cry no tension the basic education should be very strong the way uh, science uh, what you can call uh, projects are been done those will remain our fundamentals in indian education i used to wait for the science exhibition in school uh, to participate to see others project think about uh, what the new thing i am going to do so the, it's the same way uh, the management or school or parents should push the kids uh, to look for the new way of solving problem it may be as simple as uh, switching of a light or uh, through touch or through Alexa everyone has Alexa so is there somewhere we can connect it to give some other command and do something for us uh, that is can be a experimental uh, to do that experiment the using of Google map use of different AI tools are very much there for kids uh, created by Google itself so Google AI tools for kids if you type you'll get a number of tools which helps them to realize and uh, so, uh, small projects will be enough which are logic based which are uh, what you can call uh, multiple way of solving a problem uh, is important as simple as, as you can see at the back of me there is a blue pot kept and uh, it is for a plant so there's a plant now the question if you ask the students is it the best pot for this tree what can be the other pots you can suggest for this kind of tree now we don't ask these questions we accept as it as it is and we never teach them so the what should be the question now what they should go and research uh, what kind of plant it is it is endured what kind of soil it is required does it does the soil always should be wet or uh, you require something with sand mix what should be the water content now how you read these parameters so six seven eight standard kids when you think about this and then even temperature so a soil sensor a temperature sensor can be brought to their mind which will giving the values and then slowly how to convert into a design so in this process design thinking is something also need to be taught to the kids in the coming days it helps you to design better things let it be a car let it be a pot or let it be a you no know, uh, book marker for us if book marker is a book marker you put it that marks we never ask what may be the other ways of making bookmark yeah there are decorative part some people will make like a doll some this but what will be the other options of a bookmarker right when we are taking a bookmarker to another book example at least can i can you tell the kids make the bookmarker with three four folds so that every book when you started and when you closed it 
you write down those two dates and when four books you have used these four markers you make a study normally how much time you spend to complete a book we overlook the basic observations and then when they go into the really in engineering field ai and whatever you say that's the struggle that's the fear with ai and machine learning you should come through the basic intelligence quotient should be improved in you when being and it's the practice in a daily life for each one of us and even in kitchen you see five to six things you experiment might be in in a month once you experiment because business and you are busy or i am busy and all but think of a mom who normally creates n number of dishes how di- how she has done it how she has evolved up to this level is all experimental new of looking into the thing today we'll make the fry in ghee tomorrow i'll make it with dalda and maybe mustard well and they start experimenting the scope of experiment thoughts ideas is very less in education system that may be improved otherwise we have uh, the very good education system has already i have told the books are good the people are good teacher uh, teachers are good the way of solving problems and learning should be different coming to different examples the cooking example i could relate it because i had installed an ai pantry app and in that i just added your ingredients in my kitchen mostly five or six ingredients and it suggested me around 5000 recipes using those five ingredients that two in different uh, cuisines like italian indian mexican so i just can't imagine how much creative ai can be and there are so many possibilities with ai in every field so dr siddharth uh, given your background in both academics and industry how can we better prepare children for the future ai driven job market things uh, happening surrounding us must be question and if you see what is the difference between today's uh, we people and einstein so when the apple was falling he ask a question why the apple is falling and we take it so casually we don't imbi we take it we teach it as a history archimedes uh, certain uh, on uh, a cup and water spilled out so when he came into the picture we take it as a history we taught we never told now like archimedes or like einstein you go and find out few questions what why it is happening surrounding you when you were asked the kids to do that we teach it as a history remember it next class we will ask ha huh, who is that scientist who saw apple is falling fine never ask have you seen anything observed no that should be even with parents for the new parents uh, when you are teaching please give them that question is there any new way of putting cover to the book uh, is there a new way to make a book marker is there a new way to uh, what you can call uh, keep the uh, food items on table so today i will not do you tell how to keep it and tell uh, whether the rice should be keep in that side uh, taking left or it should be keep in the right side the pots on the table is make where the sense comes from otherwise you just keep and drop it all the things you eat and leave we don't put anywhere the thinking process and then suddenly one day at engineering we think uh, ai engineer <laughs> the brain was not matured enough to do these things so i want to ask one more question like what are some common misconceptions about ai that you think parents and educators should be aware of and also what are the privacy ethical use of ai uh, these are big concerns right so how can we teach children to be responsible and ethical in their use of ai technologies Uh, I'll first tell the ethics part. The ethics remains same as it is. Will not harm anyone. You use AI or you don't use AI. The ethics is that will not harm anyone. I will uh, not throw my uh, daily waste to others' home in the that side of the wall or on the road. I'll keep it in the dustbin. This is ethics. It remains same with AI. It's just we are trying to give it a new touch. So AI and ethics. AI. Ethics is the part of humanity. Ethics for animal will not harm animal. It doesn't require an AI. It's a concept. It's a life skill. It should be practiced. That anything we do. will not be harming any man nature uh, and sustainability has come up all these things so it's not just for ai it's a practice so ethics should be there and no need to think much of kids because they are the new learners uh, the maths uh, something like that ai is very tough which is not if someone can learn english grammar and maths they can learn ai uh, we should rather taking more in the even office level in apartments uh, people like uh, harshada siddharth should take more initiative teach ai to even uh, the new learners uh, so when you start your course example i start some course uh, it will be better if we take a session for parents and and share our concepts and theory what we are going to do with their kids otherwise again you will go office and tell my kid is learning ai then he is why, why much you are spending 5000 you know why you are spending he doesn't know why it is someone told ai is good but i know it is touching lives i know it is solving problems so uh, we need to do also some adult learning in ai that will be percolated teachers should be uh, more ai oriented uh, and we normally are recruiting computer science ai faculty in the school uh, we are not doing taking initiative uh, for the other teachers who is 
teaching basic uh, uh, literature or Hindi, English, geography, physics, chemistry. We are not uh, making them AI literate much. So everyone should be what is basically uh, given the basic AI training. And that also will be my request through your organization, uh, not only for kids, come out with some courses for the teachers because the teachers will be teaching the kids. It should be taught in the form of uh, when you are teaching literature also, the touch should be there. How important it is to use a computer in literature? The literature teacher should, uh, not the computer teacher. How important to use a AI tool or computer in geography? The geography teacher should uh, not. So that's the reason basically everyone today running behind to become some engineer and we don't find much taker of geography, history or literature because we didn't tell how geography, history has uh, are used to solve real life problems, right? We, we don't teach how important is Google map by a geography teacher. So that's the reason maybe we really don't take those, those things much seriously and uh, that's how uh, it is possible. Uh, it's not a myth. Uh, it can be learned by at any level, at any age and uh, getting good mentor, it will be much easier. That's so you know, while learning AI for kids and AI for teachers, so there are so many things that we can uh, add in our education, like uh, even for teachers, like if we are doing some research, like if we use AI for research, like we can uh, talk to a PDF, we can get some notes from a PDF, we can create PPTs uh, very easily with the help of AI. So that will save lots of time of teachers, of students. So these tools should really be introduced in education to boost our learning and to create more understanding uh, a depth of all the subjects. One interesting example I will give, not just AI in learning, even yours and mine will have the same experience. Geography or life, because these are the days people don't touch. So if you remember map pointing, either you have done map pointing for India or the world. Some places we have just seen on the atlas and we have never gone or I don't know whether I will go in my life. Nowhere we ask the kid or the student, make a map of the school, make a, make a map of your surrounding and then teach them how safety is important in your life. These are the areas you should not go. Mark them. How good it will be. Today I'm thinking of child abuse. I want to connect actually everything. We think of child abuse, that incident happened in Calcutta, this, that. But mindset up is not at all clear of, I'm not telling the incident. The thing is that what I should do, what I should not do, where I should go is a basic decision also sometimes. How strong it will be, you make a team of 10 kids separately along with the teacher identify the blind spots in a school and tell these are the areas you should not go not on just for human or bad there might be street dogs these that same as why not parents catch hold of the kid and take for a round today we'll go for a walk in our surrounding of apartments and houses you will come back or you take a notepad and you draw it and come back and this is the rules these are the areas you will not go when mom papa will not do so we give this don't go there don't go outside these you think of ai tool the basic learning is missing again i will tell the Real life learning is missing. So map spot should be the local area map spot. Your city map, your school map should be taught in the map pointing, which, which we don't do at all. We teach where is Uganda in map. I don't know what is the use of that. You know. Anyone can tell where is Uganda. Open a map and tell. But anyone cannot tell what are the black spots in your surrounding where a kid should not go. So instead of just bombarding them with lots of information, we should give them practical knowledge of what is good, what is bad, what is safe, what is unsafe. So these things are very important in our education system. And this is chat GPT cannot do. When teacher has the fear, when teacher has the fear that chat GPT will come and maybe take my job or this, that, chat GPT cannot identify the black spots surrounding your school and uh, village. Or, yeah, yes. So in your opinion, what are the potential implications if children don't learn about AI early on? So we are th discussing about the future uh, of AI, like after 10-15 years, these kids will be adults and they will try to find something for their careers so what if they do not learn ai or why should they start learning ai at this age it should be taught to all the kids uh, it's uh, the third vertical uh, like you have grammar and maths i will always these two examples this is the third vertical has come so three lines can go parallel it will help you to improve your uh, decision making design thinking problem solving power it will enable you the way math has been taught up to class 10 for everyone not to become a mathematician right then people go for arts commerce and other people even take music as a career dance as a career so the indian idol and all they 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 also learn maths up to 10 why then maths should be taken off from class two three because i am not going to use maths in my life so doing more maths uh, learning more grammar is help us to uh, have more control on language if my grammar is good. I have more control on language. Language is the today's uh, tool. It was earlier also. But language, I was, forgot the girl's name. She is 16 years old. 
she is know some nine languages and today she is teaching the IAS officers because today IAS IPS you can take even in own language mother language you can take in India but then to make a IPS IPS software to a much better uh, in any other language because there will be deportation or posting in different states this girl is doing this one so she learns language by her own she is using language as a tool as a power so language is a power grammar is a power maths is a power using use of computer is a power so let us add AI is the new tool uh, for future whatever the field we choose AR Rahman might be the best person sir, to use uh, AI and machine learning application to create more more innovative music is already good but bring more innovation to be there in the world level so uh, AI should be learned and should be taught now to every school to every human being for adults also it will help them to solve problems in a different or even starting one startup thank you so much Dr. Siddharth for sharing your valuable insights and time with us today it was such a pleasure discussing AI education for kids with you I'm sure our audience will find so many new perspectives incredibly inspiring looking forward to stay in touch with you thank you so much once again thank you and all the best for this journey thank you